Hello and welcome. We have the working week ending Friday the 20th of October, recording this on Sunday the 22nd of October, Australian time, just before 7pm Australian time. And this is the chart for Bitcoin. So this week has really seen quite a lot of activity for Bitcoin. Um, that uh, false report right at the beginning of the week in terms of the um, ETF that was coming out in relation to Bitcoin. But that was enough to spur some activity uh, in relation to Bitcoin in particular, uh, really, really rising, testing a number of resistance points, as you can see, and then basically coming straight back down after successfully getting through a couple of resistance areas and then starting a slow march upwards, 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 and pretty much getting up back towards the peak of where it actually had risen in relation to the range. And that's where it is right now, testing that upper resistance point and right there. <laughs> and pretty much right beneath that resistance area right now as we speak. That upper resistance area, 29,886 uh, from way, way, way back when. And that is pretty much about it there. So this is starting to get extremely interesting in terms of Bitcoin overall. Now, the previous level of interest of buying was 27,298 which is where you can see right there. Now, if I just put the line of 27,298, that was around about that area here. And so, as you can see, as soon as it hit that area, this time around, it just shot right through and went right through ballistically. And that was pretty much on the mention of when that, um, that ETF area, or when that rumor had come around, but really the technicals took over at that stage and it went right through the 10 day moving average and just went right through. Just a catalyst, I suppose, coincidental? Hmm, maybe, maybe not, but whatever you really want to think about. But really at the, in the grand scheme of things, the technicals basically took over, everything went through and it just went pretty much right through. So, you know, I'm a little dubious in terms of what all this is about in terms of this ETF overall. We already do have ETFs. <laughs> and we have Beto and BT um, that already do exist in relation to trading. Uh, so, you know, if everyone's waiting for this BlackRock ETF and all these other ETFs that are in relation to this, well, you know what? You know, you're just, you're just basically waiting and grasping the straws in terms of an ETF. Um, so, okay, if that's what it really takes in terms of getting some movement happening, so be it. But really, the, the, the charts are basically saying it all. There is some movement going on, and it was pretty much along the lines of where the buyer's level of interest was, and that's what's taken it over. So there we go. We've got it moving now. The new level of interest that's going on now is the 28,260 level, which is around about this area here where the top of the green area is there. That's where new level, new level of wave of interest is going on right now at this stage there. We'll see whether or not these new resistance areas here are basically going to hold on and whether people are wanting to actually buy up at this new area here. We have the, oh, what would you say, the psychological resistance levels of 30,000 as well to contend with. We have the prior resistance level out here as well, uh, around about that 30,000 area as well. I'll extend that um, resistance area out as well there too. And you can see that that's actually basically hit that area and bounced back to you know, there are all these resistance areas that basically keep on getting hit. Um, so will it have enough momentum to keep on going? Potentially, we've got enough bullish activity that's happening there. So Bitcoin is looking as though it's got some short-term um, bullishness going on at this point. Whether it will continue, we will see. How about the other cryptos? Now, this is where things get interesting. We move across to Ethereum. It's still stuck in its range. Is that going to be a dragging factor in relation to what's happening? Well, you have a look and it has not moved. Uh, essentially, the level of interest is basically stable, sitting along the lines, doing nothing. Um, now, moving averages have started moving upwards. Okay, Will it be enough to drag it up above its resistance areas? At this stage, nothing. Uh, the bullish tendencies are starting to appear. 
but it hasn't done anything to get it above its resistance areas at this point. So a matter of wait and see. But at this point, not much happening. We'd need to get this ADX being the orange line ticking upwards before we can actually start seeing some momentum moving through and it'd need to move above its resistance areas here. Just like any other stock, just like any other form of technical analysis, you need to see momentum and you need to start seeing some indications moving through. We're not seeing that happening at this stage until we start seeing all of that moving through. Bitcoin Cash, on the other hand, has actually moved along the lines very, very similar to Bitcoin as well. Prior level of interest was 218.17 beforehand. Um, now it's actually rising uh, to now 228. So it's actually now moved up. The 218.17 level was basically about, about here where I'm highlighting there. As soon as it went through there on Monday, up she went. So up it's gone. It's now tested this particular resistance area here around about the 244 mark, as soon as it hit that on Monday, bounced back downwards, started testing these resistance areas here, started struggling again, bang, 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 but then went through that resistance area and has actually successfully gone through this particular resistance area at $234, come back up here, and now it's struggling again up at that resistance area of 244 Now it's a matter of waiting to see how it goes from there. Things are looking decent, though. So we've got some bullish tendencies that are going on at this stage looking okay, but it is just slightly beneath that resistance of 244.43 at this stage. But we'll wait and see how that goes as well. So at this stage, we've got Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash showing some bullish tendencies and moving along quite nicely at the moment. Ethereum still acting as that anchor. Litecoin looks as though it's stuck along the same lines as Ethereum at this point. No change in terms of the parameters at this moment, um, um, unless you consider some of the moving averages changing as being a bit of a difference. And there has been some change in terms of the DMI as well as the RSI, but not enough to inspire movement across the resistance area at this point. Resistance at 65.52 still holding up in terms of preventing the movement of Litecoin any higher up at this moment. Polkadot, still quite a miserable guts at the moment. Um, we haven't really seen an exactly great amount of movement yet, although there was a 5% move on Saturday, Australian time. So it looks as though it's attempting to get going. Uh, it's still stuck in this green zone at this moment. It hasn't got above the level of interest of buying at this point of $3.96.1 cents. $3 hasn't got above that level area yet, hasn't got above the 30-day moving average yet, being the red line. So that's probably the determining factor at this stage. So still a bit of work to do before it really kicks into gear. Once it does, it would have that $4.28 level to contend with as well, which also corresponds with this area here. So there's still a fair bit of work for Polkadot to do, but at least it's off its all-time lows. That's a positive. At least we're getting away from the fully bearish tendencies. That's another positive. At least the RSI is looking a bit more positive. That's looking pretty decent as well too. So we're at least a bit better and we're a bit more no man's land type of area as well. So things are looking a little bit better in relation to this. So we're getting some stability, but I wouldn't say it's out of the woods quite yet. Solana has performed extremely well this week, as you can see. It got through its previous level of interest being 2170, which was, let me highlight that for you, about here. So as soon as it actually got around about up there, well, it actually was grappling with that last time we spoke around about Sunday, but didn't really kick into effect until it got past the 10-day moving average, as you can see. As soon as it did, that's it. It was off for the races. It got past this resistance area there, came back, tested that resistance, which was then support, and then shot off after that. So Solana has done very, very well, even like I mentioned last week as well, and, and probably the last couple of weeks overall, Solana was probably one of those ones to watch, keep an eye on, and then it was most likely one of the ones to really take off, and sure enough, there you go, it did. So Solana has actually done extremely well, going from 21, yeah, about 21, and now is currently trading at $28.94, let's say an even 29. So that's actually performed extremely well over this week. Really much right in the 
middle of this support and resistance area here. So anyone who has actually been able to pick up some Solana over the past week or so, you've done extremely well. Congratulations on that. Looking very, very nice in relation to um, its parameters at this point. The new level of interest is $24.50. So at this point, you're probably looking pretty good in terms of support areas in between that area before you have any major concerns of any major sell-off area around about this point here. So you can probably very, very comfortably even raise your, raise your stops, if anything. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, but in relation to things there, if you were to raise your stops, you could probably put it behind the 10-day moving average with very, very good comfort. Dogecoin, this, out of all honesty, is looking very, very quite possible as being the next one, if anything, to potentially make a move. Um, so, you know, I've been talking about this as being a potential one, maybe, you know, if, if it got off and moved, and even in terms of, say, like something here in, in relation to the way things have been moving, uh, you know, there's, there's some movement happening here. We're above the green zone area now. This is be, this is now looking stable. Looking at this RSI, it's now bouncing off the RSI from the upside. So this is actually looking quite decent, the way it's actually moving. We're now above the no man's land territory in terms of above the 10 and the 30 day moving average. Coming back now to test from the upside as well. It's actually looking quite decent the way it's actually moving. I wouldn't say 100% yet. You'd still want to be getting above this area here before there's any firm commitment going on. But this is actually starting to look very, very tempting um, the way this is actually starting to move. You know, here, in terms of yesterday, Australian time in particular, a 2% move upwards. What we'd really like to see now is this starting to move towards the upside in terms of strengthening of the bullishness now. Um, because we've got the RSI, uh, the RSI movement going in the great direction now, but this now needs to actually basically, uh, this, sorry, this one here needs to actually now start turning upwards. But this is actually now starting to look very, very tempting and you know, basically a move above the resistance area here with, with the indicators moving upwards now you're starting to look pretty darn decent. So Dogecoin is now probably the next one to make some potential move here. And uh, this is actually, um, yeah, very, very tempting indeed. Where it goes, well, you know, beating this resistance area here, you then be testing this resistance area here at this point. You now you've got these areas here. But then after that, you've got to test that resistance area there too. So these are your two major key resistance areas of, of note to basically cover there and then after that that's pretty smooth you can you could probably be easily testing uh seven cents after that point there should a successful test of these areas here go okay but that is looking quite quite good overall and that could be you know if getting up to about seven cents you've got some decent support there at that point and Cardano. Now, Cardano is actually looking fairly decent as well now at this stage here too. You've got an upturn in both your 10 and 30-day moving averages. You're trading above the green zone. You've got some bullish tendencies appearing both in terms of your DMI as well as your RSI there. The ADX has already started turning up. So this is actually looking very, very decent as well. This is already trading above a support level being that blue line. You can just, just barely see there at 0.2559. Not looking too bad and not looking too shabby at all either. It's trading already above the level of interest of 0.2551, which you can already see it's already passed through. And that is probably a reason why you've got an increased volume all of a sudden, 18.8 .8 million uh, that's already traded through. So you can already see that volume starting to increase. So Cardano, there is actually some interest coming into this overall. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, Things are looking reasonably good for Cardano as well. So really, we've got about an even mix in terms of the eight that are regularly reviewed here uh, on a weekly basis. We've got Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, which have already taken off quite nicely. Solana, um, Solana um, which has already gone very, very nicely as well. 
and we've got potentially Dogecoin and Cardano, um, which could be taking off quite short, quite shortly. Keep an eye on the indicators for the last two. Um, things could go very, very nicely for these. Should they make higher highs um, from where they are currently going at this point? But um, things are looking a little bit more positive. But it will all depend now how Bitcoin relates in relation to this resistance area here. And of course, the psychological resistance point of 30,000. Should Bitcoin stay above the 30,000 level? You could probably expect things like Dogecoin and Cardano to probably take off a bit more. There'll be that psychological aspect there that people will probably take on board a lot more. Well, I hope that helps, but it looks like there's getting some very, very big interest in this area at this point in time in relation to cryptocurrencies. Some very, very interesting times ahead for sure. I'll leave it there, but have a fantastic trading week ahead. Um, well, feel free to come across the ASX Traders United Facebook page as well and get involved with things. We've got a very, very, a very, very heating up co uh, competition going on over there as well. We'd love to have you on board with all of that as well. And in the meantime, definitely catch up with the um, weekly review in terms of the cryptocurrencies there, as well as um, the, um, the weekly stocks review as well and long-term reviews for everything that's going on too until next week have a fantastic trading week in the meantime catch up with you soon bye for now